Welcome to another awesome video. Today we're going to look at two vintage answering machines. The one on the right is a 1980s Panasonic machine used by my family well into the 90s and it uses standard audio cassette tapes. But this one, this is a PhoneMate 400S from 1973. It's a very unique machine. You can see it uses a fixed reel-to-reel -reel tape. I've been interested in getting one of these ever since I saw it in the 1980 movie Used Cars. Uh, it looked totally different than any answering machine I'd ever seen. And I had a lot of questions like, how do you get the tape out of there? How does it do the outgoing message with one tape? Now, all sorts of interesting questions. We're going to find out and compare these two machines today and get them working. And we'll show you one thing you can do on an answering machine that you can't really do on voicemail. Yeah, but, but the charges are correct. Now, if the technician didn't give you an answer much... As much as it makes me feel old to say this, there's a lot of people watching who may have never seen an answering machine in operation. Have you ever seen one before this making this video? The Terminator. Oh, I guess I that's did. true. You've seen one in movies, but you've never seen one in real life, right? I don't think so. Anyway, do you know how it works or what it's used for? It records voicemails like a phone. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly like voicemail, except the hardware is local at your home instead of at the phone company in the cloud. Initially, the phone company did not want you connecting your own equipment to their lines, but the success of the phone mate and the popularity of answering machines helped turn this around. So we use our own phones today, we used to rent phones. Answering machines are basically automated tape recorders using the technology of the day. The phone mate from the early 70s used reel to reel, then came cassette, which was probably the most popular format, then micro cassette, and then finally digital memory storage. Answer on. Eventually, voice over IP services like Vonage appeared. These services had voicemail, which negated the need for your own answering machine. And a lot of people don't even use landlines today, just relying on their cell phone's voicemail. Of nine. New voice messages. So that's enough history. Let's hook it up and take some calls. Now the Panasonic uses a standard RJ11 jack, but the phone mate doesn't. It has those weird DIN looking connectors. And at the time it was out, that RJ11 wasn't the standard. It was something more along the lines of the old fashioned four prong modular jack. But fortunately with a little guesswork, we can figure this out. And I plug this into my voice repeat router. Ta -da. So now the voice over app your router comes here and it goes to these two plugs and we'll see if, if I guessed right when we dial the thing up. Thanks for calling the 1973 answering machine. By the way, you got 30 seconds. What do you have to say to yourself? Just leave a message in the beat. You're listening to a recording made over the phone line, voice over IP to a 19... Voice over IP to a 1973 approximately answering machine. This call will be recorded for 30 seconds, and then the tape will stop it. Voice actuation. So if I hang up now, you're just going to hear a busy signal or something like that. Panasonic one, I'll save my family messages. Now the Panasonic machine is superior to the phone mate in almost every way. Sound quality, ab able to change tapes when they get worn out, voice operation, uh, you know, message lights. Uh, it, it's just a better machine. To be fair, it is 10 years newer though. Nobody's home. Please leave a message at the tone. You can listen in on people's conversations when when you accidentally leave their like voice if they're about to. Yeah, that's the one thing you can do with answering machines. You can't do with you can't do with voicemail is that you can live monitor the calls and pick them up. So if you ever see a movie and somebody says pick up, you know they can actually pick up the call and listen to the message as it's being left. Hmm. You can also hear people talking. If they yeah, guess. yeah. The answer machines would also frequently answer before you could get to the phone, so you end up recording a lot of calls. The Panasonic is a dual deck machine. Uh, the deck on the left uses standard tapes and does everything a mono tape recorder would. It'll even play music. So it has fast forward, rewind, 
all the standard controls and it plays and records. The deck on the right, however, is special. It works more like an 8-track. It is a capstan driven only deck that uses this endless loop tape. And you notice there's a take-up reel in the cassette and there's nothing on the left. And if you look at the deck itself, there is actually nothing that drives that. That little nub or whatever just holds the tape in place. These tapes are only a few seconds long and there's the end of tape foil just like an 8-track. However, the Panasonic also marks the tape with the tone, so your outgoing message can be less than 30 seconds, unlike on the phone mate where it has to be 30 seconds every time. And removing the Velcro front panel on the phone mate reveals that it too is a dual deck machine. On the top, you've got a sort of a standard mini reel to reel with three inch reels for playing and recording incoming messages. On the bottom, your outgoing message thing is a loop. It's just a loop of tape. So these two entry machines basically employ the same design. A full featured deck for playing and recording callers messages and a one direction only tape loop for the outgoing message. What I find fascinating about this is the mechanism doesn't use foil but the tape simply gets thinner causing the switch to go down. So if we lift this switch up, that's what causes it to go. And holding in the start button simply forces it till the switch becomes up. So if we lift up the switch it'll eventually go. Thanks for calling the 1973 answering machine. By the way, you've got 30 seconds. What do you have to say for yourself? Just leave a message at the beach. We've got a race head and playback head. Not sure why they didn't use foil or even 8-track here, but I think I read online the guy invented this in 1968, so it may be an older design. I was able to bend those uh, hinged felt pads back and clean the heads, and hey, this thing's still working after almost 50 years. While the outgoing message section is custom, the top portion seems very standard. Uh, they're standard looking reels and they're held in place with a C-clip. Once you get that off, uh, they can easily be lifted out of that and they look like they would fit on a standard reel-to-reel -reel player. I didn't try this because I was afraid that, you know, the rewind forces might snap off the tape. But I think if I, you had to recover some messages, you could just put this thing on a reel-to-reel -reel and play it back. Underneath the cover is a simple rim drive tape mechanism. That's a play. Now record will knock down that erase head. Sound quality is not going to be great on this, but good enough for a human voice. I wonder if this is a standard component. The speaker says Pioneer on it. Next, let's talk about repairs. The Panasonic, after 38 years, needed a belt replacement, but that was it. It was also interesting to see how the design was and that it shared one sort of drive mechanism. This is about where the captain is here and there, so it's all, it's all a shared capstan drive mechanism. I believe this is the one for the take-up reels and that's what had gone bad. Uh, but anyway, that's it. And you can see it is a definitely a microprocessor controlled unit. There's the microprocessor. Now the phone mate is rare and usually more expensive, but I got this for only $10 and here's why. On the back, something happened here. You can see there's something going on with the battery compartment. Probably some leaky batteries at some point. And I can't even get it open. So my first step when I got this thing was to just get inside and see what's going on behind that panel. Damage will result. So yeah. So damage did result. So these things are in really bad shape. Look at that. It's terrible. Uh, that's disgusting. This public service announcement, always remember to take the batteries out of your stuff if you store it. So had the previous owner not left these batteries in, there was really nothing else wrong with this machine. Um, there are no belts, you know, it's all uh, driven by these rubber gasket things, which were fine. And it was pretty easy to find a wall wart power transformer to hook up six volts to where the D-cells would go just for demonstration purposes. As we wrap up, I wanted to point out one other feature, this message flag. It's just a white piece of paper that moves with the tape to show you when you walk into a room that that the tape has moved and that a message has been received kind of a neat ingenious little thing done mechanically whereas later of course it would be a led or something thanks for watching our video about answering machines a once popular home electronics product that has long ago been replaced by software see you next time for another awesome video bye answer on of nine new voice messages. Dead plus tax made four eighty made fifty seven fifty five for a total of two hundred twenty three sixty one. Now the thing I need to ask you, did the technician give you an estimate before he did the repair? 
number one and number two, did you approve the estimate? But the charges are correct. Now, if the technician didn't give you an estimate, 